Welcome to St. Mark's Episcopal Church. We're happy that you're joining us for this online service and we hope that you soon be able to join us in person for a service and celebration of Holy Eucharist. Our service today begins on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. Give us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those ineffable joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. A reading from Revelation. After this, I, John, looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, singing, Amen, blessing, and glory, and wisdom, and thanksgiving, and honor, and power, and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these robed in white, and where have they come from? And I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord.
A reading from 1st John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this, when he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. The word of the Lord. Jesus Christ, 
according to Matthew. Praise to you, Lord Christ. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. sustainer. Happy is the way one modern translation begins the Beatitudes rather than using the word blessed, and perhaps that connotes one of the meanings of that word. And in the biblical sense, happiness could be defined by the Beatitudes. The Beatitudes, however, are not the way most of us probably would think of happiness. After all, it is our constitutional right to pursue happiness, and most of us think we know what that means. But often, our culture says one thing about happiness, and our faith tradition says another. The culture says, happy are they who have and hold an abundance of talents, good looks, money, things, accomplishments and good deeds. Happy are those who know how to get their piece of the pie and hold on to it, for to them belong the kingdoms they build. When Jesus sits down on the side of the mountain and he says to those who would be his disciples, blessed are the poor, the poor in spirit. Happy are those whose poverty makes them vulnerable enough to know that they are totally dependent upon God and that everything they have is a gift from God. They know who they are. They are truly blessed for they have eyes to see the kingdom of God and the richness of life that surrounds them. Happy are they because they do not suffer the anxiety of trying to protect what they think is theirs, because they know that everything that is, is part of God's kingdom, and they have eyes to see it. The culture says, happy are those who avoid loss and pain. They are happy because they do not experience death. And even when it seems to be happening all around them, 
They have an infinite capacity to deny it. They must deny it because their happiness is based on holding on to and controlling their world. So happy are they who deny death, for they are comforted by their assurance that they are in control. And just Jesus says to his disciples, blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are they who know and feel the pain of love when they lose someone or something they care about. Blessed are they who know that everything is a gift and when there is loss, especially those whom they love, they know that they are a part of a mysterious universe at the heart of which is a love to which they submit in trust all that they lose. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. The culture says, happy are they who know how to compete, who know how to get theirs and hold on to it. Happy are they who climb the ladder of power and success and use it to get what they want, for to such will belong the little pieces of this earth that they are able to buy. And on the mount he said to them, Blessed are the meek. Happy are they who are secure enough in themselves and in their faith in God that they do not need to build kingdoms to shore up their self-worth. Blessed are the meek, for no matter how many temporary kingdoms are built by the aggressive and strong-willed around them, it is the meek who know where the earth came from and to whom it belongs, and so they will inherit it. The culture says, happy are those who hunger and thirst for power, control, and material gain, but they will get what they ask for. And Jesus said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Happy are they who seek in all things to live in right relationship to God, to their neighbor, and themselves, for they will be filled they will be filled with inner treasure that will never be destroyed or taken away. The culture says, happy are those who show no weakness or vulnerability, for they will be able to rise above it all and not have to deal with failure and flaws in themselves and admit their mistakes. For they will not need to count on anyone but themselves. And Jesus said, blessed are the merciful. Blessed are those who have compassion out of an honest awareness of their own pain and loss and weakness because they will be able to receive and give love. They will know the merciful love of God. The culture says, happy are those who can get it all, whose consciences are numbed to any kind of priority, for they will be able to take whatever comes their way and enjoy it without questioning how it fits into the big picture of this world, without asking how it affects the rest of life around them, for they can have it any way they want it and not feel a thing. Blessed, Jesus says, Blessed are the pure in heart. How blessed are those who will one thing, who have a single purpose to serve their creator, who know that the whole creation is one and to touch any part of it will set the whole thing shaking. For they shall know God who created it all. The culture says, happy are the strong and powerful who can overwhelm anyone who threatens them and take what they want from the weak, for they will get what they go after. 
And Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers. Happy are those for whom relationship is primary, who seek peace even when they don't get everything they want, for they will know the priorities of God and discover their, their true father, mother in heaven and become sons and daughters of God. The culture says, happy are those who play it safe and don't make any waves that cause them loss or pain, for they will be satisfied with their own little worlds. But blessed, Jesus says, are those who risk and are persecuted for that which they know is right in the sight of God, for therein they will find the kingdom of God. It's All Saints Day, the day when we're reminded that by our baptism, we are all of us saints. And to be a saint, it seems, is to be counterculture. If you want to know what a saint looks like, read the Beatitudes. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. the prayers of the people. In peace we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work, our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace for the just and proper use of your creation, for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression, for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, for those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy, for the peace and unity of the Church of God, for all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, and Dabney, our bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers, for all who serve God in his church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, for those on our prayer list, for those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries, for our children and teachers, for our first responders, for our neighboring parishes, and our friends and our neighbors, and those with which we disagree. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. 
We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, especially family, friends, parishioners, and those we love, that we may, they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit that we may live and serve you in newness of life to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. Hello, St. Mark's. I'm Mike Rell, and I can't begin to tell you how excited I am to be joining you in ministry as your new rector. My family and I had the opportunity to visit Venice this past weekend, and we were so touched with the level of care and genuine hospitality extended to us over those few days. We can't wait to meet you all. Over the next couple of months, we'll be preparing to make the move to Venice. My official start date is January 13th. However, if you would like to be in touch between now and then, please feel free to reach out to me you can email me at therevmikerow at gmail.com. Meanwhile, I sure welcome your prayers as we navigate the next couple of months as I continue holding you in mind. Once again, thank you for extending this invitation to me and my family. We can't wait to be among you. We are already calling St. Mark's home. See you soon.
things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord, to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn, to pro proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son and his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with St. Mark and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God, God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Please join me as we say together the act of reception. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. I remember your death, Lord Christ. I proclaim your resurrection. I await your coming in glory. And since I cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse me of my sins and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me, in this life and in the life to come. Amen. Please join me in the post-communion prayer. 
Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be amongst you and with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Let us go forth in the love of Christ. Thanks be to God.